Hello, I'm Neeraj. Today, I will try to explain the concept of Wasserstein GAN. The main component of Wasserstein GAN is Wasserstein distance. To properly understand the role of Wasserstein distance, we have to go through some previous cost functions used in the previous versions of GAN architectures like uh, Kale divergence, uh, jensen seinen divergence and so on. Actually, what happens, GAN architecture contains two important components, generator and discriminator. Generator uses some random samples to generate images which look like real and discriminator tries to differentiate between the actual real and the images generated by the generator. So now, suppose we consider the outcomes of generator as a, some probability distributions and uh, some real images also through some distributions then there may be several cases where both distributions may not overlap each other because uh, uh, because we use the random data to generate uh, images through generator so several times it may be possible similarly there may be some less overlapping there may be full overlapping so the actual problem starts when the overlapping between two distributions becomes zero or they both distributions may be totally non-overlapping in such kind of scenarios you may face either a, a mode collapse problem you may face the overfitting problem you may face the training instability problem so such kind of issues may occur jensen seinen divergence tries to solve this but uh, when you go through in the detail, you will find that the proportion in which the distributions are far apart, the jensen seinen divergence generally does not reflect the differences in that proportion. So that actually affects the quality of outcomes. So in the case of Wasserstein distance, which is also known as earth mover distance, they tries to identify the distance between two distributions, like how a probability mass, we means what may be the minimum effort required to transfer a particular probability mass to one distribution to another. So this way, it effectively captures the actual differences means according to the concept actual differences between two distributions now we will try to understand all things through some example so now let us uh, start with scale divergence scale divergence is asymmetric uh, uh, divergence so means uh, scale divergence of p and q will not be equal to scale divergence of q and p so in that case suppose we have a formula to represent k divergence for probability distributions p and q where x is a member of uh, the entire event set x and uh, we can represent the probability k uh, divergence of p and q by px log px divided by qx now suppose we have a two probability distributions and uh, have uh, five events so you can see that the starting two events have uh, non-zero values but the last three events are zero but sum is equal to one similarly in the second case the starting three distributions are zero but last two distributions are non-zero so in that case suppose if we want to calculate the KL divergence then what will happen so in that case the K divergence of P and Q can be given as like uh, first uh, event and then the first event, then Q's first event, then second event log, second event and so on. So now if we put this value then you will find that it is equal to 0 0.4 because first event is this and first event is this. 
so it is like 0 0.4 divided by 0 it is already infinite second event is 0 0.6 And rest of the events are, for example, here 0 by 0. And again here 0 by 0 0.5. So if you solve this, these all will be 0 but and these all will be infinite and plus infinite so the final outcome will be infinite so in that kind of scenarios you have identified that tail divergence outcome is infinite so in that case if we use in such kind of scenario if we use the tail divergence you will face a lot of trouble like discussed so in the Jensen's and divergence it generally tries to solve this problem here I have also used this uh, diagram to so that how both uh, probability distributions are non-overlapping. So you can see that first two uh, points are non-zero here and uh, for second distributions last two points are non-zero but they are not overlapping with each other. So in that case Jensen and divergence they try to get a medium intermediate uh, distributions. So they calculate an intermediate distributions M. For that, it takes the average of P plus Q. So in that case, it will be average of, so our P is like 0 0.4, 0 0.6 and then three zeros. And the second divergence is, uh, sorry, second uh, probability distribution is first three is zero and then 0 0.5 so this is like a element wise uh, sum and then we will take the average so element wise sum like 0 0.4 plus 0, 0 0.6 plus 0, 0 plus 0, 0 plus 0 0.5, 0 0.5 plus 0 so this will be like uh, 0 0.2 and then it will be 0 0.3 here all 0 so it will be 0, here 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0, 0 0.25 and similarly last one will be 0 0.25. So this will be the intermediate uh, distributions and they try to use this intermediate distributions to calculate the uh, differences between two probability distributions. So now let us see how it works in the current scenario. So in that current scenario, we will first calculate the half tail divergence between P and M. So it will be like uh, here two values. So it will be 0 0.4 log 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.2 plus 0 0.6 same same way like we calculated earlier so 0 0.6 and then here 0 0.3 so plus then 0 into log because here 0 and here also 0 is there so 0 by 0 and similarly in this part you can see that 0 0.25, 0 0.25 and here it is 0, 0. So, so why I am calculating all this? Uh, because you will understand that in the calculation, after calculation I think uh, you will get some uh, you will get uh, value, these all will be 0, 0, 0, 
so it will be like 0 0.4 log 2 and then again 0 0.6 log 2 so such kind of things you will get every time but you will not get you will not be able to use the full credit of this 3 and this 3 so now if we take the second part let us see what happens so with respect to q if we take like this then what happens here first 3 is 0 so first 3 value will be 0 because here the starting value is 0 so 0 if we multiply 0 with any number because uh, we, here we are calculating by this way so the formula will be qx log so in that case uh, first three value will be 0 only last uh, two value will get some credit so 0 0.5 into log 0 0.5 by 0 0.25 plus uh, 0.5 into log 0 0.5 by 0 0.25 so again you will get uh, 0 0.5 log 2 plus 0 0.5 log 2 so in that case we have just uh, these two terms positive and these two terms having some positive value so after getting all those and then by dividing I try to solve, you may get something like 0 0.6 uh, you will get uh, some outcome like uh, near to 0 0.69 kind of thing after a few more examples if you calculate this manually you will try to understand that uh, when we change the distributions the differences reflected by the Jensen's and divergence may not be it's effectively representing the difference between two probability distributions. So now, if we consider the Wasserstein distance, then Wasserstein distance between two probability distributions P and Q is actually the cost of transforming one distribution to another. Like here, it will be like cost of transforming P. To cost of transforming P into Q. For that, what we need? We need some optimal transport plan. This is important because if we use the Wasserstein time distance in the current format we need an optimal transport plan so what will be our transport plan so we have to transport transform p into q so p is 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0 0 and q is 0 0 and 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 so first we need to transport 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 so with these two value we have to transport here so how to transport so step one will be like identify the mass movement required mass movement will be like we have to move 0 0.4 from the position 0 to the position is like uh, 0 1 2 3 4 so position 3 and still we have 0 0.5 minus 0 
means still we need something else so second mass movement will be like 0.6 we will take 0.1 and at position 1 and move to position 3 then in position 3 we will have 0.5 and again the remaining 0.5 the remaining 0.5 from the position 1 we can directly move to the position 4 means uh, we will move position 4 to position this position but still one will be left one will will be required so we will take one from here and move here and then we will move 0.5 to here then this way we will totally transform p to q now we will calculate the total cost of complete transformation so it will be equal to mass into distance so in the first case what is the mass into distance so we are moving 0.4 to distance how much distance so here it is like 1 2 3 so we are moving into three distance and again in the second case how much distance we are moving 0.1 here to here means two distance just one and two distance so 0.1 into 2 and in the third case what is the mass movement it is 0.52 here so it is from second position to fifth position again three so it is like 0.5 into 3 so in that case 1.2 Uh, 0.2, 1.5. 1 so total will be like 2.9. So this is the uh, actual versus time distance between the probability distributions P and Q. So it is 2.9. Means once we transform the probability distributions p directly to q then this may be the total differences or total cost required so in this case versus time distance can uh, if you just uh, take more examples you will imagine that it is more effectively uh, calculates the distance between two distributions so here you have find distance between two distributions in finite here it is 0.69 and here it is 2.9 so this is the difference now one more thing because when you use the versus time distance as it is in the to calculate uh, or as a cost functions in your uh, uh, in your uh, versus time gain architecture then it will be Uh, almost intractable because every time you will come with an optimal transport plan and suppose you come up with such kind of optimal transport plan with every epoch of your iterations then i think uh, it will be tough to complete your uh, training process so we are using some different strategies